Gideon and Brian for inviting me over and making this meeting possible. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to talk about uh, neoliberalism, applied linguistics, and the PNLP. And you may be wondering what PNLP stands for. So uh, we agreed um, at, to talk about this uh, recently re released book called Neoliberalism and Applied Linguistics, edited by David Block and others. Okay. Uh, there is a chapter in it about ELT textbooks. And uh, I'll try to apply that to our uh, national textbook program in Brazil, <coughs> the NLD. Okay. So uh, I'll start by talking about neoliberalism first. We have some uh, reactions from, uh, uh, I think this is not the, the right uh, file. <laughs> Not yes. the right one? Yeah, it's not the ones, I think. Well, any, anyway, uh, to change? yes, please. This one? Has anybody not seen this book? Maybe I'll just pass it around. Just to make sure it gets back. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, Peter <laughs> McLaren in a, in a text called Critical Pedagogy and Globalization, 30 Years After Che, che Guevara, he says uh, that neoliberalism and globalization seek to democratize suffering, obliterate hope, and assassinate justice. And Henry Giroux, uh, in the same vein, from a an, an text called Challenging Neoliberalism, <coughs> New World Order, says that it's easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of neoliberal capitalism. Uh, this is more or less the uh, spirit of, uh, of the uh, of, uh, the, the ideas of the, the, the book that we are uh, going to discuss here, um, all the implications that neoliberalism has to uh, language teaching. Uh, from Henry Giroux also and Monica Heller in a paper called The Commodification of Language. So uh, for them, what has been going on lately is, uh, is, is that language has been commodified under neoliberalism. And for David Harvey, everything has been commodified. So in a way that the market works as an ethic for all human action. Okay, so in a, in a book called uh, Brief History of Neoliberalism. Uh, and then, uh, in the, the book itself, Block and uh, <coughs> colleagues, um, so try to apply these ideas of uh, these notions of neoliberalism to apply linguistics and uh, more specifically to uh, English language teaching. And they say that <coughs> English has become the language of neoliberalism and globalization uh, in a way that uh, from recent researches that I've been uh, doing in Brazil in in uh, specifically two, two different places, uh, Minas Gerais and Sergipe, I, I heard similar things from teachers, like, uh, what do you think uh, about English teaching? So they say it's very important to teach English because it is the language of uh, globalization and so on. Uh, it has become a kind of common sense. But on the other hand, they also say that English is also one of the languages of global resistance. Uh, but uh, I don't think that they <coughs> developed this idea very well. They just mention it, so because they are very much worried about talking about the, the, the dark side of, of this uh, new, uh, neoliberalism and its relation to English language teaching. And then uh, somewhere else, they also mention language is something rather different to sticks and stones. So uh, it's, I'm not going to elaborate on this because it's not really what uh, I'm, I'm focusing on. But uh, it's something I, I find troubling in the book because mm. they say that uh, language doesn't belong in the real. Uh, like it's uh, there is there's been too much focus on interpretation and not on the real where inequality uh, belongs. So inequality is real. Language is not it's something like that. But uh, maybe we can go through this uh, later on with in our discussions. 
Uh, and then there is this chapter specifically about textbooks, <coughs> where the, um, the the author mentions that there is uh, nowadays uh, textbooks nowadays uh, have a tendency to to show lots of uh, famous people um, and uh, as as a kind of role model for the students. And uh, so they say that what's going on is an aestheticization of everyday life in which there is a uh, focus on self-promotion and the need to attract attention. Uh, we can see that mainly uh, through pictures, images in, in, in these textbooks, but also in some texts, uh, written texts. Uh, and for them also, <coughs> the ELT publishers um, think that inspirational content is motivating for language learners, meaning that then uh, having these role models, uh, people that they know, they, they know like from TV, from the internet, uh, as a, a model for them is kind of uh, inspirational, motivating, because then they can may, uh, think of that as a, a goal for themselves also. <coughs> and uh, and for them, for the authors also, the LT industry reinforces the link between English and professional success. There is a direct uh, relation to that. And also, developing world teachers subscribe to such a dominant ideology, which I also find troubling because um, I don't know. I <coughs> might ask to what extent do teachers really subscribe to this agenda? For example, in Sergipe, where I've been conducting my research, I've heard from teachers that some of their colleagues don't even use textbooks in the classroom. I'm going to talk about this later on. The, uh, the textbooks are, are distributed by the, the, the federal government, and so they are free for everyone, but the teachers uh, resist to use these textbooks because they prefer they have their material their, that they've been using for a long time, and sometimes they don't feel comfortable changing that. So that's why I ask, do they really subscribe to this agenda, what the contents of these books? So if the books show these uh, uh, <coughs> famous people and uh, all this ideology, do teachers really uh, reproduce that? And do students also take that for granted? So, the PNLD, or National Textbook Program, um, has been going on for some years, but for foreign languages, it started in 2011, for just for primary education. Um, and it is also foreign languages, in this case, English and Spanish only. Uh, there is also another aspect that is uh, different from other, other subjects, is that the books, uh, the, the students take the book home and they don't have to uh, return it to the school. Because uh, for other subjects, uh, the same book is used year after year by different students. But that doesn't happen with uh, foreign languages because then the students can write on the book and use it as, as they like. Um, and there is a CD included as well. So this uh, program uh, selects which books can, uh, are, are chosen to be used in schools. <coughs> so there is a, a committee that assesses these books. And they, uh, with, uh, there is a very uh, specific, um, uh, there are specific criteria for that, OK? And, uh, so that it is not any any book just that goes to to school. That there must be a they must follow these these criteria. Okay, some of these criteria are these: the the books must show diversity, citizenship, uh, respect citizenship, show uh, how people value res respect and tolerance, uh, and talk about minority rights and so on. So there are kind uh, for this um, 
this collection is specifically for 2011 because then this year uh, there is there was there was another selection for this year but for secondary education I think the uh, criteria were were not exactly the same but for this one there were 92 questions okay and some of them related to several things uh, vocabulary grammar speaking uh, uh, even the quality of the, 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 the paper lots of things and one of the questions was this is local and global diversity recognized and treated with respect so I'm mentioning this because uh, Block and, and, and his colleagues were uh, are talking about uh, how these books, textbooks, carry certain ideologies and uh, which are taken everywhere in the world. <coughs> but in Brazil, there is this, this program and then uh, the publishers have to prepare this books according to this criteria go through uh, an assessment and only then if they are uh, chosen they can be bought by schools and then uh, like for the secondary uh, level program there are seven choices but for the primary education so far there are only two but then the, the school chooses which book they prefer and then the government sends one book for each student in that school, okay? So, that's why uh, I, tr I, I decided to talk about this because uh, <coughs> I don't think it happens exactly as they say about neoliberalism uh, with the Brazilian situation. I'm, well, not in this case because uh, as uh, uh, John John McCauley, he was talking uh, yeah, about yesterday. Uh, I think in Korea things are different because, as he said, the government is trying to pushing something very specific and uh, for uh, the universities and schools. But in Brazil, uh, they they are trying to filter these uh, um, values and ideas. Okay. So these are the two books that were chosen, links, and keep in mind for the for primary education. Uh, I'd like to show, I think this is the other file, I, I didn't have it here. So where is my... Uh, I'd like to show some, some images. The other PowerPoint? No, but I think it wasn't uh, put on the, the, this machine. Ah, uh, it's here. <laughs> I'm much careful. Let me see if I can open this. <coughs> uh, well, th this is uh, one question that I took from one of the books. Uh, so <coughs> when they try to um, apply to these, uh, to reach the requirements of, of the Ministry of Education. So they, they put this, this question about the Brazilian Statute of the Child and Adolescent, but it is a gap-filling exercise. So uh, if I can get you to show you the, the images, so what I'm trying to show is that they have followed to a certain extent these uh, requirements. But then they kept some of the old traditions of uh, textbook making and so on. Okay. So how do I get out of here? S S S you know, like, you know, like computer, my computer. Removable this. Okay, so here it is. Hmm. <laughs> um, so one of the books, Johnny Depp, of Real Avini, if you read them, check here, Paul the Taylor. <laughs> we, we must all know him. Akuma <laughs> Sartre. 
And then this one also to talk about the aspirational content. So there is this uh, activity, <coughs> my role model, which is a Brazilian car racer. It's uh, Felipe Massa is my role model. His favorite actor is Robert De Niro, and his role models are Ayrton Senna and Michael Schumacher. <laughs> so there seems to be a lineage here. Uh, so he is an inspiration to me. So they kind of follow the same uh, ideas as the, the book says about diversity, <coughs> but with some stereotyping, of course. And then there is this section, I will talk briefly about this. Uh, so to meet the requirements, they, okay, so they uh, have some cross-cutting themes. And they, uh, for this one, for example, so Brazil is much more than that, the cross-cutting theme is ethics and consumerism, sorry, citizenship, stereotypes commonly linked to Brazil. So the students are uh, supposed to discuss about this. And then there is another um, unit all about fashion. And uh, so the students have to prepare, uh, <coughs> like uh, think of uh, um, clothes that they would design and, and so on. And the cross-cutting theme for that unit is ethics and consumerism fashion of all ages and the question that they are supposed to, to discuss is what are future generations going to think about today's fashion uh, okay so uh, what, what, uh, in my opinion then what they are doing is that blending these requirements from the government but at the same time following what block and uh, at all call this uh, relationship between um, neoliberalism and uh, English language teaching. So, okay, that's it. Thank you. <coughs> 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 